Hey, Fly Tires, and welcome to Avid Max Tying Tuesdays. My name is Brady Lair, and today we're going to tie a North Fork special for you. It's a great little nymph pattern. Uh, it's a dark nymph, or you can tie it in some lighter colors as well, but a pretty versatile and very fishy fly. Starting out today with the Tiemco hook in our vise, we have the 2487. This is the BL version of the 2487, just a nice barbless option. Uh, comes barbless from Umqua if you get it from us here at Avid Max. On there, we have a tungsten bead. I have the 330 seconds black nickel already set on the hook. And then we're gonna come in with a little bit of lead wire and weight this pattern down just a little bit. So I'm using the 015 lead wire just to make this a nice, heavy, beefy, nymphal pattern that'll get down quickly in the water column. You can fish it in nice, fast water and it'll help get you into the zone nice and fast when you have those drop-offs and you got to reach down and get those fish. From there, we're going to start our thread. Thread I'm using today is a Vivas 10 knot in black. And I'm just going to go ahead and get that going right behind the lead where I left off here. And we'll kind of work a little bit of a taper out and secure everything in place. So just some quick locking wraps, working back and forth, working on that transition up onto the lead. And then we can sneak up on and secure that in place here. And then we'll go ahead and tie in our tails, which is gonna be the first material. And one of the most used materials on this pattern is the goose biot. I'm gonna use black today. Just a nice dark variation of this pattern. So I'm gonna align my tails and we'll do it so that the concave version is facing outward and marry them up so that they're the same length there. So we have um, same length, splayed out real nicely and ready to be tied in. So now we'll figure out our length and we're gonna do kind of a short tail on this, but just short of that length of the body overall. So we'll position those on either side of the hook shank here and secure them down, give it a nice loose wrap so that we know we're in a good position before we snug them in place and avoid them turning on me. There we go. And then we can put some locking wraps down on top of it here and walk back on up. Use those biots a little bit to help smooth that transition up onto the lead. Clip out our excess material. We're going to save that excess material for a little bit later on here. It's going to work dual purpose for us today, which is really nice whenever you can avoid waste with your materials. It's always a benefit. Once we have that tail secure, we're going to add our ribbing. Our ribbing for this pattern is just going to be some brassy size wire. And we're going to do some red, add a little bit of pop to this pattern. So we'll go ahead and secure that right in on the side here and work on down to where those tails are. I was just using my finger to help kind of splay out those goose biot tails the way that I want to. And once that wire is secure, we can go ahead and start to dub this pattern. Today I'm gonna to use this hair's ear plus dubbing. So it's a hair's ear dubbing with just extra picky fibers in it. And then this is the black color here, so we'll dub up a nice tight noodle with it and work on our tape around forward. So just slowly transitioning up again. This is fairly kind of thick bug overall, especially with that lead wire underneath. So you want to kind of add a fair bit of dubbing as you go. And we're going to go up to about the three quarters position, just past halfway. And we'll start our thorax area. We'll finish up with the abdomen here. And just a little bit more, make it a chunky fly. Just 
Just about like so, that looks pretty good there. So now we're gonna bring our ribbing on forward oh, five or six times. Just with some nice even spacing as we go and then we can capture that out right in the front of where that dubbing landed. And go ahead and spin that on off, break it out of the way there. Like so. And then we are ready for our first set of legs. There's gonna be two sets of legs on this bug, but same material we used on the back side for the tail. Just a little bit more goose biot. Pattern's awesome because it utilizes just a few materials to create a very lifelike nymphal pattern. So we'll secure them, do them one at a time. If you can do them two, two at a time, go ahead and do that. Just for me, a little more control on these. The one on either side here. Spin my thread so it jumps backwards for me here. There we go. And then we can trim out the excess there as well. We got our legs splayed out nicely. And then we'll put our backing material down. Our first set of backing that is. There we go. To help prop that up, I'm gonna add just one quick dub noodle of the black hairs here. Real sparse for this, just one turn of dubbing, really. Just like so, that's gonna prop up our biot here, which is our backing material. So I have the trimmed down biot that I used on the legs, and it is tapered, so I like to kind of trim it to a point that's gonna be the right size to lay on top, kind of the thickness of the fly overall when we lay it down. So it'll be positioned right on top there. And we'll secure that with our thread. And a little long, so I'm just gonna shorten it slightly. Work back on it there. We can trim out the excess of that position. There we go. And then a little more dubbing, and we'll repeat that same process again. Do the legs and then tie in the backing. I love fishing this fly a lot in nice deep pools. Again, in, in fast water when it transitions really quick and you need to get down fast. It's a great fly for a multiple fly rig if you want to avoid using extra split shot. This nice weighted fly will help get your other flies down if you're fishing a midge in partnership with it in tandem. It's a nice tool to have to get you to the right spot. This is really presentations everything. If you don't get your flies into the right area, it doesn't really matter what flies you're fishing at that point. So we'll do our first or our second set of legs. One on the side closest to me. And I repeat that on the opposite side here. Just like so. Clip out that extra. Just a tiny bit of dubbing for our prop for our last piece of backing. Right over top of those legs there. And same thing we did before. Try to match this up. Secure that right on the back. 
And I like the concave side down on this so that it kind of hugs around that fly. There we are. Now all we have to do to finish this up is a little bit more hairs here. Clean up those thread wraps, add a bit of a collar, and then we'll go ahead and whip finish it. See this fly most often in, in black, but traditionally it was tied with more of a tan, hair's ear type dubbing, and some gray goose biot. So that's another color option that's available, I believe, through Umco Feather Merchants, and also a very effective fly. Anytime you're utilizing hair's ear, on a pattern, it tends to be a very effective pattern. Just a, a great material overall. So we give it that whip finish. And we have a completed North Fork Special. Killer little nymph pattern. Not too difficult to tie. Lots of great material usage. And a really buggy look when you're all done.